Hey, morning guys, I'm the Deck Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. I'm actually getting over a five day flu and went down some really extreme rabbit holes in terms of research that I typically don't do. And I wanna share that with you. So I suggest you guys stick around if you're into off-grid communication, obtaining weather fully off-grid. And even if you're not, the techniques I wanna show you might have some nostalgia. So if you're a 1980s, 1990s computing nerd, stick around. And then for everybody else, even if you don't have an amateur radio license, Almost everything I'm going to show you, minus doing the radio bit, you can do yourself right now with just a computer. Stick around. Now, the problem I'm trying to solve is fairly simple. I want to be able to go in the field, use my amateur radio and my computer and a simple antenna and request weather information off grid. What's interesting is that this is not too dissimilar. This off grid requirement that we as off grid amateur radio operators have not too different than Mariners at sea. And they have been using a technique for decades where they don't have access to the internet, but they have access to sending an email over the airwaves. And that's what we're going to explore. And as it turns out, the National Weather Service here in the US provides a very cool service that's gonna strike that nostalgia chord with a handful of you, especially if you were coming of age in computing in the 80s and 90s, like I did. Now, the National Weather Service will actually, to this day in 2026, publish five-day forecast weather information to something called an FTP server. This was a traditional way of being able to exchange and share files, upload and download files, and they are still maintaining the service to get today. Now, this service does require access to the internet. I wanna take a moment here to explore that service first and what that looks like, and then we're going to build through the rest of the steps on how this applies to off-grid communication. In preparation for this video, I wrote up a small blog post that I host on my radio only BBS. We're gonna use a section of it just for uh, the demonstration to make this easy. And I will be also sharing this with the Buy Me A Coffee members. That's one of the perks over on our shared drive. So the way this is gonna work, we're gonna scroll down here to uh, this little demo here. And like I said, the National Weather Service does support a FTP service. So in Windows or Linux, doesn't matter. What you wanna do is use the FTP command. This is the FTP client application that we're going to be using to connect to the National Weather uh, Service or run by uh, NOAA. And hopefully we don't take them down. It is a government site. And right now we are prompted with a very scary message saying this is a government system and it's trying to ask for a username. You wanna use anonymous and we'll type that in and for authentication, you can put any bogus email address. I'll put foo at bar.com. And now we're logged in. You'll have a little terminal session here. And what they have done is they've structured the files or the products that they are hosting here, uh, similar to a traditional Linux or Windows directory structure. And the structure is fairly simple. You can see here that we're gonna go into a directory called data. So I'm gonna type in CD for change directory data. Then we're gonna move into the directory for forecasts. So we'll type in CD uh, forecasts. And now I think I typed that wrong. It's CD forecasts. All right, now we're in that directory. And then next is changing into the state directory. And then finally, we wanna change into the state of Arizona, my local state. Now. There's gonna be a variety of files here that will have to decode on what they mean. But if you know which file you want, you can type in get as a command and the file. So I'm gonna type in AZZ541. That's the forecast zone. We're gonna unpack how to get that in a second, dot text. And now it's going to download that file onto my system and then we can disconnect from their server. And if we go ahead and take a look at that file, we can see here that we have forecast information for the Phoenix area for the next five days. But tomorrow, for example, Sunday, 43 will be the low and 70 will be the high. So anybody with a computer can do this, Windows, Linux, Mac, it doesn't matter. Now, this is where some pre-planning comes into account. There are these things called forecast zones. There are, I think, about 4,800 of them in the US and they represent a geographic area where the forecast is actually uh, maintained. And in my write-up here, I have a link to the public zones map on uh, weather.gov. So we'll open a new tab. And what you wanna do there is scroll down to your state. So I'm in Arizona 
and central and they offer a pdf and a png image file now they're no longer maintaining these because it's too much work and you can roughly see a crude map of your area here and i believe i requested 541 and you want to make sure that you are using the full three digit zone code so off to the right here or the top right in northeast arizona you can see there's 016 that is uh, significant so that the way these files are structured is you have a state level directory to two character code az you go into that and you're going to have a list of files you can even use the ftp service to do an ls listing to list those and the file format is going to be two characters state az the letter z for zone and then the three character zone number dot txt so pre-planning is required you have to know that in advance when you go to request it but again stick around for that demo i want to show you at the end i have made this completely nerd free with my off-grid platform the big question here is mr tech prepper the man you require the internet to do that yes you do so let's go back to our 1980s 1990s time machine where a lot of people did not have access to a lot of the services offered on the internet the world wide web uh, the browsers that we're all used to today, services like FTP, but they had access to email. So some very clever software engineers and developers created something called FTP Mail. And again, the National Weather Service may be one of the last uh, organizations providing FTP Mail. And what it is, is a bridge between the FTP server and email. We call those gateways or proxies and really quite wonderful. So this is something else everybody can do today with their normal email accounts. You can craft a special message to nws.ftpmail.ops at noaa.gov.gov. Doesn't matter what you put in the subject line, I have something I like to put in just for my own records. And what's nice is you can quite literally cut and paste those FTP commands we entered by hand. And what will happen is when they receive this email from you, it will execute those commands and send you back that data. Now it is important in the body that you do put open, but every other command you see below it are commands that we issued uh, to change into those directories. And that's it. Then send that off, wait a few minutes, and you should now have a response from the National Weather Service over email with the forecast for your area. Now, while I was sick this week and was unable to talk, I went down a serious coding rabbit hole. And I knew now that we can use the same technique of sending this via email using the WinLink global email system. And that's where the off-grid connection is available. I've done many videos where I've shown you guys being able to send email using my radio, my computer, and the WinLink system. So we would package or we would curate our email message the same way, but just use over-the-air transport for that. So I didn't like all of these steps involved of having to uh, create something like a field card for the two field and then the body and then trying to figure out where um, which zone I was in all of that good stuff as it turns out the National Weather Service also distributes a county to zone file with 4800 uh, records that maps a geo coordinate to a county to a zone so I use my search background and guys this is really what you're uh, contributing to when you join by me at coffee is my ability to work on r d like that so i want to show you a prototype that i developed called et mail it'll be part of the mcom tools r6 release members will get access to this tool early and what this is is a new front-end application for uh pat winlink uh it run pat winlink will still run in the background but you can see here i've got all my inboxes and what's nice about MCOM tools is that I already have plug and play support for GPS units. And if you don't have GPS, you can put in your maiden grid location and it'll use GPS first. If that's not there, use maiden grid. So this is the flow. You launch ET mail, step one. Step two, click weather. It consults an offline index of those 4,800 entries and sorts them by closest. So I'm in Arizona. We can see that the closest forecast zone for me in Arizona is in Maricopa County, my county. And then the area is Cave Creek, New River. Zone is 541. Just hit request. No nerd stuff. You didn't have to look up any maps. This is all done 100% offline. If I go over to my outbox here, you can see that it has prepared a message from me to the National Weather Service. 
and I have a subject that includes National Weather, for, uh, another National Weather Service forecast request from Maricopa AZ. That's something that their system doesn't care about, but it's my informational purposes. And you can see it fully builds that request. So if I travel to Arizona or California, for example, where I just got sick, picked up that nasty bug, I don't have to do anything. It would change that listing on the fly to California for me. So then all we do now is connect and we'll send our email. And we have to wait typically about five or so minutes uh, before we can recheck again. And then we should have a message in the inbox. So that message was sent out. We can see now that that should be in my uh, sent folder right there at the top. Uh, in fact, you can also see here was a request I did earlier for uh, Tennessee. I changed my grid on the platform and it requested uh, zone 097, which was for, uh, I guess, uh, Franklin as the, the county here. I'm trying to make this thing dead simple for checking email. So if you have internet access, Telnet, I've got favorites here listed so I can connect to, for example, uh, Packet. I can also do a manual entry if I want really quickly here. Uh, we could do like VARA HF, I could select the bandwidth, uh, put in the target, blah, blah, blah. But I'm also gonna add a couple of other options here that are gonna find closest to you, but also brute forced and find the best based on prediction. So the platform is really stacking up. And again, guys, I implore you to come over and support what I do. This development takes a lot of time. All right, let's just go back to Telman Access here. Let's reconnect. Hopefully we have one message already. And let's see if, oh, zero. Okay, I am gonna have to pause this. It's uh, 09.52 local time. This is probably a good time for the Jeopardy theme song. Okay, so I waited about a minute. Let's connect one more time and see what happens here. Hopefully get we get one message back. And we do have one message. We'll go to mail inbox here and you can see, oh, I've got a message from VE6MMM, cool. And now we can see we've got that same file that we had manually done earlier, uh, fetched via FTP, but now we have it for, uh, re have it received straight over email. So guys, this is the stuff I'm working on. We're using old tech that still has value. I'm trying to modernize it with offline data sets and just using my background in developing uh, web content management systems, search systems for the last uh, 15, 20 years or so. So hopefully you have value on this. So this is a tool. I know that there's a lot of different ways in amateur radio to get off-grid email, whether you're using the WinLink catalog services, APRS, you're tuning into your local, local nether, NOAA weather radio, FM radio station. This is just one more tool, but I gotta tell you for me to be able to go in the field set up my antenna and do four clicks here, make my coffee, set up the camp, take care of whatever I need to, come back and just check again, is going to be a game changer for off-grid ops. All right, guys, I'm the Tech Pepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Shoot, I'm out of coffee.